Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Wolf. I'm a professor here at the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and I'm a co-director of the Apply Lab. I'm Dr. Anna Kasevicheva. I'm also a professor at the University of Toronto, Mississauga, and co-direct the Applied Perception and Psychophysics Lab. And today we are going to be reading Duck Rabbit. Hey, look, a duck. That's not a duck, that's a rabbit. Are you kidding me? It's totally a duck. It's for sure a rabbit. See, there's his bill. What are you talking about? Those are totally his ears. It's a duck and he's about to eat a piece of bread. It's a rabbit and he's about to eat a carrot. Wait, listen. Did you hear that? I heard duck sounds. Quack, quack. That's funny. I distinctly heard rabbit noises. Now the duck is wading through the swamp. No, the rabbit is hiding in the grass. There, see? It's flying. Flying? It's hopping. Look, the duck is so hot, he's getting a drink. No, the rabbit's so hot, he's cooling his ears. Here, look at the duck through my binoculars. Sorry, still a rabbit. Here, ducky ducky. Here, you cute little bunny. Oh great, you scared him away. I didn't scare him away, you scared him away. You know, maybe you were right. Maybe it was a rabbit. Thing is, now I'm actually thinking it was a duck. Well, anyway, now what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Hey look, an anteater. That's no anteater, that's a brachiosaurus. The end. Well, this is a really cute children's book. This is actually taking a very classic visual illusion and turning it into a story for kids. What's interesting here is that the duck rabbit is intentionally an ambiguous figure. You could think this is a duck or this is a rabbit and you and say your child might disagree about what you see. And that's actually something that we're interested in the lab is really understanding how it is that different people can sometimes disagree about what they see. We mostly agree about what we see in the world and yet we often disagree about exactly where something is or what something is or, well, whether that's a duck or a rabbit. And your perception can also change from moment to moment. So for example, at one moment you might see this very convincingly as a duck, right, where this is its bill, this is the back of its head, this is its eye, but at other times you might interpret it differently. So maybe tomorrow I'll think that's a duck. Or a rabbit. So this is a really fascinating visual illusion where we have an image that's reversing in depth. And the black rectangles that are here should look like they're kind of going in, that you're looking at hallways. But in reality, the depth is actually going the other way. The reason this works so well is that our brain is actually doing a lot of work in trying to interpret the information that we have to try to figure out what is the depth in the image. So in a case like this, we have an image that your brain is receiving and your brain is doing some work to try to interpret, are these hallways going in or are they kind of sticking out? So what's actually happening is that we have all of these cues, uh, a lot of uh, linear perspective. So we have these lines that are kind of coming together uh, in the distance and that's kind of creating this very strong impression of depth in this image. A lot of depth is in fact kind of made up because the image that we're receiving is fundamentally two-dimensional. Our eyes get a two-dimensional image but we have to figure out what is the three-dimensional depth in the scene. So again you have these great perspective cues and these great textured cues that are kind of indicating that this is a three-dimensional box that's kind of sticking out when in fact it's actually going the other way. If I move him around, he should look like he's following you a little bit. This image here, this is actually concave, so I can actually put my hand in it. So it's kind of going in like this. We have this very strong assumption that faces take up volume, that they're three-dimensional. So he looks like he's kind of sticking out like it's a normal face.
we are basically experts at perceiving faces because faces are very, very important to us. And we are particularly good at seeing upright faces. So when we have a face that's actually upside down, it is hard for us to interpret. So if, for example, if I show an image like this and I show it upside down, you know, it looks kind of weird, like, you know, there's maybe something not quite right here. But then if I flip it the other way, what you actually see is something that's pretty horrifying and very different from what you would have expected. We are particularly sensitive to upright faces and we're not so good at inverted faces. Another interesting phenomenon is that we have a very strong tendency to perceive faces in everyday objects. This is called face pareidolia. This car one is particularly good because it looks like it's kind of singing along to the radio. Or this loaf is just happy and sleeping and loafing around. I also really enjoy these handbags. So we have a bunch of emotional expressions even, right? So these are just like everyday objects. And you know, you can actually interpret some emotion out of these faces. So we have not only just a fairly specialized ability to see faces, but we also have a tendency to make inferences or make interpretations about the images that we have.